All right, hello and welcome to the Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, and Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Krista Moore, who is in lovely Raleigh, North Carolina. How are you doing? That's right. It's beautiful here. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and I'm in beautiful San Diego as usual. So uh, different sides of the country, but two beautiful places. And uh, Krista is uh, the founder of K Coaching. And you left uh, corporate America about 20 years ago in sales, sales leadership positions to follow your heart and entrepreneurial spirit. And you've been building a coaching company ever since successfully, correct? That's correct. Yeah. And what we wanted to talk today about is sales leadership. Okay. And it's, it, this seems to be a perennial uh, conversation or discussion because it seems to me, Chris, I don't know whether you agree, but it seems to me that we still we still make fundamental errors with sales leadership. We promote the best salespeople into, into sales leadership positions. We, uh, without really figuring whether they're the right fit for it, we don't train them particularly well. And then, I mean, I think the statistic is like 15 months. I don't know whether that's changed before they're burnt out. They hate the job. Everybody's getting on their backs and you're now looking for a new sales leader. So what are we doing wrong? Just that. Putting them putting a uh, successful sales representative or a seller and putting them in a sales leadership role without giving them the learning and development and the training that they need, um, or even determining if that's the right position for them on the onset. And that happened to me. I mean, I, I was a pretty good salesperson and they put me into sales management. And, you know, it was my, my training was show them the ropes, you know, teach them what you do. And that, you know, that worked okay, but it wasn't sustainable. It, you know, it absolutely wasn't. But I thought that I was doing a pretty good job. And I think that's also um, a big part of it. Yeah, so what is, what is wrong with that idea of taking somebody and just saying, oh, well, just get everybody to do what you do? Well, there's two things. First off, it's a completely different skill set uh, to be a sales leader versus a sales rep. And there's a whole lot of different components to that, which I'm sure you can understand. Mm -hmm. Certainly there's the management of processes and people that they might not have had before. And then there is just the elevation to having an effective leadership style to be able to motivate and manage and inspire others. And so those aren't what a successful salesperson typically does in terms of their strengths. So that's one thing. The problem with the show me, show them the ropes, so to speak, is I call that the Pied Piper management style, you know, follow me off the bridge <laughs> yes. and do what I do and come along. Um, first off, it's just, what I say it's not sustainable is you're going to create a bunch of mini me's mm -hmm. and mini me's are going to do pretty well, but you're not going to be able to take that and really, really have some up leveling in your sales mm -hmm. success because you know, you're trying to make people just like you and not everybody's <laughs> going to want to buy from you. Yeah, ex exactly. And I think one of the other things, and I think this is something that that happens a lot is, let's face it, if you are, if you were a successful salesperson, yeah, you're probably pretty good at closing business. And now you're in a management position and you're getting all this pressure around the numbers. So what do you naturally gravitate towards? You gravitate towards the end of the, the sales cycle. And you start inserting yourself in and maybe helping nudge deals over the line when reality you're elbowing people out of the way and you're, uh, you're taking over and you're neglecting the early stages. That's right. And I, I think as you were describing that, it reminds me of this story. Uh, one of the, I left corporate America Mm -hmm. um, after many years of sales and sales leadership, and I decided to start my own business. And I did that introspection. Like, what did I like over the past 20 years? What am I great at? What would I do if I didn't get paid? And, you know, what did I do when I was a child that um, are my true strengths and at my core? And I think that's a big part of it, is really doing that introspection and reflecting on what are my strengths and that is another reason why going from sales to sales leadership, you're going to naturally gravitate to closing the deals because that's what you're good at and that's what you enjoy. And that's not going to make you a well-rounded sales leader. 
And I think part of it too is that we, I mean, I guess most people see that progress, progression equals management, right? And uh, that that seems to be what we have created this idea of if you, if show success in your career, it means at some stage you move into management, mm -hmm. as opposed to some people are just suited to being the best at the role, like the greatest salesperson ever. I mean, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And you probably earn more money than your manager anyway. Um, but we, what we've created this thing of where we're, we kind of push people towards management and they feel like they have to go there because that's the only way you show real career progression. I would agree with you, but you made a good point. Often um, the sales people are making more money than their managers. And if money is the primary motivator, mm -hmm. then they should not be influenced by <laughs> You know the position or the the title so when you go to work with an organization and they bring you in to prepare the you know to help their sales leaders or to you know help to graduate somebody into a sales leadership position how do you go about that uh, i'll give you an example so i was hired by this company to help a particular sales leader with his communication skills um, and being a better sales leader for his reps. He was a great example of a good salesperson thrown into sales. But what was happening is his sales reps would not take him out on sales calls because he talked too much. You know, he just you know, took over the sales call. And so part of the coaching engagement was very clear that our objectives are to get him to be more of a leader and less of the seller. Mm -hmm. But he also had another part of his role, which was um, to maintain the relationships and partnerships with some of the key vendors and suppliers, which he didn't do very well at all. So there was two coaching objectives. So to answer your point, first, it's really identifying what does success look like mm -hmm. at the end of the coaching engagement and what are the key um, objectives that we want to get through. Um, and if you don't mind, I'll, I'll finish the story on him because no, go ahead. It's, it's a good one. So. I remember about three months in, he's like, okay, coach, put me in, I'm ready. And he was going out to make a sales call with a sales rep. And he said, I'm not going to talk. I'm going to let them, you know, do the, do the sales themselves. And um, so they went together and he told me who they were going to see. I happened to know this prospective prospect. And for the sake of the story, we'll call this guy grumpy because he just okay. is. <laughs> so I'm thinking, oh, are you sure you want to try your, you know, newfound skills on this guy? I was a little worried. Um, and so here's what happened. He goes into the sales call. Um, his sales rep is sitting beside him, and he just sat there. And the sales rep did a great job. He asked all the open-ended questions, uncovered the needs, and just was mm -hmm. being very professional and, and letting his rep do it. And Grumpy is behind the desk. And they're getting along really well and things are going great. And all of a sudden, Grumpy turns and looks to Jim. We'll use Jim's uh, name mm -hmm. uh, for this. And he, he looks at Jim and says, so what do you do? <laughs> and it was like, uh, you know, uh, well, coincidentally, behind Grumpy on the back wall, kind of like what you would see here, mm -hmm. is a big ship, a big picture of a boat. And Grumpy's standing in front of it with these two huge, I don't know what they were, marlins, you know, down to the ground mm -hmm. with a big grin on his face. And so there Jim is like staring at this picture behind Grumpy and Grumpy's like, so what do you do? And he's like, uh, I build ships. And he's <laughs> like, what do you mean you build ships? He said, I build relationships and I build partnerships. And so uh -huh. it's a great story because Jim calls me on the phone and tells me about it. And I'm like, oh, I love that whole shipbuilding concept. And that's what he was learning um, through the coaching arrangement that this is all it really was, was building mm -hmm. relationships and partnerships with my sales reps, with my clients, and with these vendor partners. And, um, that, and so the good moral of the story is Grumpy and Jim really started building their ship together and they closed the deal. And Excellent. And Grumpy turned into a happy... <laughs> I have a ship in my in my office with the captain's hat. I didn't uh, plan that, but that I, I need to hang it on the wall because I, yeah. I teach and uh, coach a lot around the shipbuilding concept. For that reason. Yeah, and I love that. That's a that's a fantastic story. And I guess that they that uh, you know Jim then learned that his how his role is a more supportive one, and 
Yeah, yeah. And, and that's and that's a, that's a great breakthrough. And the other thing I think is, and I'm and I'm sure you do a lot of work around this. Is the other thing we tell sales leaders to do, and and not prepare them for is we go, go coach your salespeople. Oh, yeah. And and what do most people go? They go. Uh, coaching, coaching. Okay, what's my experience of coaching? Oh, I remember like high school football. I remember our coach. So I'll just go and bark a few things or tell you, here's what you should do. And then you'll go and do it. And that's you're, coaching. You're spot on. <laughs> I, and I just, I just wrote an article last week on this exact subject. And it was because it's football season. So it makes mm -hmm. you think of, um, you know, the analogy of sports coaching when it comes to coaching. But I want sales leaders to see themselves as a coach but not necessarily have that analogy that they need to be yeah. telling people what to do. Like, oh, I coached them on that. Coaching is understanding, not telling. Yeah. And if, if a sales leader can build a coach approach to his leadership style, amazing things can happen. And that's part of that sales leadership development. And we see effective sales leadership is the number one differentiator between those companies that are slow to grow and those that are knocking the ball mm -hmm. out of the park. And once an individual realizes that, gosh, I got a really important role here. I could make or break, you know, the organization oh, and take them so seriously. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm, I'm a, I always say that your sales manager is your greatest revenue multiplier because if your sales leader and sales manager is working well, then he's coaching, he's getting the best out of his sales team. You've got it. Your, your, your increase is going to be so much more than just one or two people improving. On That's their own. right. And, and, and the, you know, the question comes up, well, then, you know, how do you make that shift, right? How do you um, train and develop them and sure hiring a coach or sending them to management mm -hmm. school. I mean, all those things are going to be helpful. And, um, this, I had worked for this small business that was bought by a fortune 500 company. And I was a sales leader at the time. And they, they had a greater awareness, um, of, on sales leadership style and skills than I was ever aware of. And they said that I needed to go to management school. And I'm like, management school? What do I need mean, management school? Like, look at my team. We're, you know, we're winning all these deals. I, I got to be out in the field. And I reluctantly went to management school. And I remember this day like it was yesterday because they were talking almost a foreign language to me about asking questions and understanding the people that work for you and what motivates them and how you speak to them. And I remember going on a break downstairs to where my team was and I walked up to this guy that was with me for about six months and you know we would high five after calls mm -hmm. I was the pie piper and I but I put my hand on his shoulder because we were allowed to do that in those days and I looked <laughs> him in the eye because that's what they told me to do and I said I just want you to know that you're doing a terrific job and someday if you keep this up you could be a manager someday and he looked at me and he said what, did you learn that up in management class? <laughs> I do suck. Like, I am that bad. I love it. So that was like this awakening for me. And that really took, actually changed my life. I mean, I started reading all the books and listening to all the tapes and taking all the coursework. And that's where I started changing myself. And um, amazing things started happening around <laughs> me. So that's why I'm passionate about sales leadership, coaching. Um, that's why I build a business around it. And yeah. um, that's, I love that's, the that's a great that's a great story. It's like a scene out of the office or something. I mean, you could yeah. see Michael Scott doing that. But I mean, that's it's right. a it's it's a perfect as I said, it's a perfect analogy. And I think that's it. I think if there's one message to come out of that for if, out of this for people listening. And particularly those who are in any um, leadership position or whatever, is that you have to train, you have to give your people the wherewithal to succeed. And maybe if you're a salesperson and they look like they want to promote you into a sales leadership position, maybe you should speak up and say, what training are you going to provide for me? Here's what I need. Yeah. And I think I'm a big believer in, in assessments. I mean, strengths mm -hmm. finders, we use that all the time, you know, uh, the Gallup. Right. Strengths. And even if you can get to the top five, you know, just the, the 1999 assessment um, really can be helpful because you don't want to mentor someone or, yeah. or put them into a role that 
is just not aligned with who they are. And that, that's a big mistake. And everybody ends up being unhappy. So I would do yeah, that. Yeah, we we follow that that principle. Um, we from Friva Malik and other and Drucker and all those people is that is that uh, a lot of people folk you know they come and they go. Oh, let me look at you. Okay, let me. Here's your weaknesses. I'm going to work on those, fixing those weaknesses. And we say no. Let's find the strengths and then find the job where those strengths are accentuated. Because when people are weak, is you're probably rarely ever going to improve them to the point that they're really good at that. So, as you say find the people and fit them where their skill sets and where their natural talents, you know, really lie. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I'd like to even take it a, a step further too. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of studies around authentic leadership and being sure. ruined and all of that, but it just comes down to, and I, I use the saying all the time. I was coaching someone this morning uh, so around a similar subject and it's, it's be you, not them. Mm -hmm. So when you're yourself and you're at your best and, you know, you're really um, being true to who you are in terms of how you behave and how you act and how you interact, um, you're just going to be better at what you do, you know, just more effective at what you do than trying to be the poser or <laughs> I have to act this way because I'm the manager yeah, and I think that's fantastic. That's a fantastic point to to end on today. I think that's great advice for for everybody. Be what did you say again? It's be you, not them. Be you, not them. Perfect. All right. Before we go, uh, Krista, I'd like you to tell people a little bit more about yourself, what your company does, and how they can find out more about you. Sure. Um, I start I started my business 16 years ago. We do sales, leadership, and coaching and consulting. Over the years, we've introduced various ways to learn. Um, a lot of online learning, digital coursework is available. I do a lot of speaking. Um, right now, though, I'm really shifting um, to how I'm delivering learning and development, and I'm putting together business retreats. I believe that if we can take sales leaders out of their work environment, get them together with other like-minded individuals, and I have some methodology and coursework around that, they're either a three-day or a five-day retreat, and that's when transformation really happens. Mm -hmm. That's when we can really spend some time. You, I, you can send somebody to management class. You can you know, tell them to take an online course. But I can tell you in a very intimate, vulnerable, retreat, relaxation setting, uh, just transformation takes place. So I'm, you know, I'm all fired up about business retreats. And um, I have my first Race to Amazing retreat in uh, Evans Mill, May 17th through the 21st. It's all around the book that I wrote last year, which mm -hmm. is called Race to Amazing, Your Fast Track to Sales Leadership. So we put it into a retreat format program along with the digital course. Well, that's fantastic. Well, we'll have uh, all that information up on um, Sales Pop and uh, your book and all that and uh, uh, any other information about you. So I really encourage people to check that out, kcoaching.com, Krista Moore. Listen, this has been fantastic, uh, really fascinating insights. Uh, thank you very much for joining yeah, us today. Thank you for interviewing me. I appreciate yeah. it. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Take care.